All right. Hi, everyone. Stephen Lee here. Um, hot off the presses, the SBA announces opening of Paycheck Protection Program's Direct Forgiveness Portal. You know, as mentioned in my previous video, uh, this new portal will streamline applications for loans of $150,000 or less. Okay, so this is this portal is really geared towards 100 PPP loans that are $150,000 or less. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual portal. This is what the portal is going to look like. Okay, so the website is directforgiveness.sba.gov backslash requests backslash borrower backslash login. I'll leave a link in the information section below. As of right now, just like I mentioned in my previous video, today is July 28th. The portal is actually um, operating under an invite only pilot period, right? So you're not able to access the portal just yet, but good news, um, they have a really good, a robust uh, platform user guide, which I'm gonna go over in detail uh, in just a minute. Okay, so once this portal does open, and I think the mentioned um, portal open date is August 4th, so just wait about another week or so, and then you should be able to register to start your request. So you have to register here, and I'm going to go over the details step by step here in just a moment. Okay, and if you're ever looking for um, what I'm going over right now, it's under this resources tab right here. This is the PBP Direct Forgiveness Platform User Guide, and if you click that on that, you're going to come to this 29-page um, user guide portal. This is very well done by the SBA to really give you a heads up in terms of what you need to do to prepare. So let's go through this step by step here. So this is page one. Um, it kind of goes over the direct forgiveness portal registration, uh, the application submission, application signing, submitted application, and the resources. So the registration is right here. So once again, um, probably starting around August 4th, You'll be able to access the portal using this website or URL right here. Um, and once again, the this uh, direct forgiveness is only for loans that are $150,000 or less. Okay, um, and you can you should be using uh, Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome browsers for the most optimal experience. Okay, new registration will be required to utilize this portal. So once again, you'll have to go right over here to register to start your request. Once you've registered, then you'll have a username and password to sign in to begin the actual direct request. So this page just basically tells you how to register to start your um, application. You're going to need to create a, a, a unique username, user email address. Um, business should not have access to this email at any given time. Should have access to this email at any given time. Okay, email address cannot be changed one, once registration is created. Okay, so please be careful on the email address that you use. Uh, make sure because it says it cannot be changed. Then you enter a password and then meeting the security um, criteria, um, which is basically 12 characters, including at least one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, and one number and one special character. So pretty standard. Once you enter that, you're going to have to enter in the, the CAPTCHA um, letters or code here and then click to sign up. Okay, once you have uh, hit press the sign up button, you're going to receive two separate emails to complete the registration and grant access to the portal. Remember, you have to complete each step to gain access to the application portal. So the first one is verify your email address. Um, that's going to be the first email. And then the second will probably be here, which will be you know another email. Click here to continue your registration, okay? And then once you provide and verify your email addresses, it cannot be changed once again. So please be careful which email you register under. So the direct forgiveness portal, this is what it's gonna look like, okay? Once you have everything, you know, enter in your username and your password, right here, username, password, and then you can probably click remember me and then sign in. Okay, uh, password recent for your password links are are available so if you forget it so the sms two-factor authentication right all platform users will encounter a two-factor authentication upon login um, a us-based mobile number must be used so make sure you have um, a mobile number that you have or that you have readily available so that every time you log in you will have access to get the the um, 
the password, right, the code to enter in. Right, direct forgiveness application submission. Let's go take a look at this. The portal has many tools to help simplify the business submission process. Start new forgiveness requests. So once you log in and you go through the two-factor authentication, this is the um, this is the screen that you're going to see here. Okay, and basically it's going to be you're going to start a new forgiveness request, or you could take a guided tour. And this is also going to provide a step-by-step -step instruction to the application. Okay. Um, in order to complete this and to start this, you're going to need your PPP loan number um, that's originally signed to you by the SBA. And this is going to be on your lender loan documents, okay? And then you're also going to need your tax identification number, Social Security, EIN, or ITIN, okay, that was used to apply for your PPP loan. So you're going to need two pieces of information here. You're going to need your, once again, your EIN, Social Security number, or ITIN as well as your SBA loan number. This can be found on your SBA closing documents. So take a look at that. And then once you enter that in here and here, you're gonna hit find your loan, okay? Um, because this is really nice because once you enter this in there, they're actually going to pre-populate and find your loan and pull the information, okay? So it says that most loan information will populate and be locked for edit. Any incorrect information must be updated through PPP Lender prior to forgiveness request and submission. Um, so you'll notice here on the left-hand side, they're gonna pre-populate everything here from the bank to the um, support phone number that you need, the loan amount, the forgiveness amount, and the steps here, kind of what your progress is, okay? And it's gonna send, um, you can also send direct messages to the SBA and associate it with your application. Okay, you can also save your request as well as exit the wizard. Okay, um, pre-filled out once again. If it's grayed out, then you cannot update it here. But there's going to be these little blue tabs that are really helpful, so that you know it's going to let you know what you actually need to fill out. So let's hover over red question marks for detail relevant to those fields. There's going to be some more. There's going to be the NAICS code. You're going to put your title here. Um, primary contact name, primary email, um, and then also your business NAICS code. The NAICS code can typically be found on your tax return, okay, on the first page of your business tax return. The direct forgiveness portal loan details, right? Um, most likely there's going to be a checkbox here. If lender provide additional funds as part of the PPP loan increase after initial disbursement, this is not common, so you probably don't have to worry about it. You're going to have to select your covered period here, okay? So covered period is going to be, there's going to be a drop down. You can choose eight weeks, 24 weeks, or other, okay? Um, and then if you, um, then you're going to have to enter right here, your gross receipts amount for 2019, okay? So the gross receipts amount, um, you're going to be able to find that. Um, on your tax returns typically, and then also your gross receipts amounts for 2020. Remember, for second draw or your second PPP loan, you're going to have to show that you know there was um, definitely a 25% drop in gross revenue. So this is probably this is why it's so um, important to have the correct gross receipt numbers for 2019 and 2020 entered in here. So the direct forgiveness portal, the loan details is section two continued. Once again, there's these nice little tabs here. Um, on this page, you're going to enter the number of employees at the time of the PBP application. So that's when you first applied for your PBP loan. Okay, not now. Then the second part is number of employees at the time of the loan forgiveness request, which is going to be the current number of employees that you currently have. Okay, that's as of today. Okay, so this is in the past. This is as of today. And then you're going to hit... Um, on number three, the drop down menu, yes or no. Did you, together with the affiliates, receive a first or second drop PPP loan of two million or more? You know, most of this is going to be no. So enter that, yes or no. And then number five, number four is basically an amount of PPP spent on payroll. You're going to enter this in there. Remember, in order to have your loan forgiven completely, you need to at least spend 60% on payroll. So make sure you get this number correct. And then what is your requested forgiveness amount? Okay, hopefully it's all of it, all of your PPP loan that you have right here. Okay, as long as you meet the requirements. The demographic details, you can skip this. It's not required, it's option, optional. And then you wanna hit this next button right here. Um, so the direct forgiveness portal, no documentation. 
Required documents will be shown on the screen below. Select the type. Sometimes this is not required. If this is your first PPP loan and you're getting all of it forgiven, uh, most likely there won't be any documents required. However, um, if this is your second PPP loan, you know, based on my um, what I've been reading, um, the SBA may or may not be requesting um, documentation related to the forgiveness of your second PPP loan and mainly the documentation related to the gross receipts test, right? Did your gross receipts drop um, by that by that percentage, the 25 percent? Um, so we're going to have to see if this is there going to have to be a supporting documents requested or required for PPP loan number two. So if you look here on this page here, it's already they've already requested for full forgiveness of $150,000. Okay, so this is where you enter in, um, you upload basically you choose the file type, um, the name, um, basically the the type, the list of file types are acceptable. Okay, um, and then you choose the file and then you hit upload right here. Okay, you might have to upload multiple documents. Okay, and once you've uploaded everything and you see it down here, then you hit next. Then um, let's see here the supporting documents. You know, documentation requirements will be explained here. Um, this is for the revenue reduction test. Once again, to be eligible for a second draw PPP loan, you must have experienced a revenue reduction of not less than 25% in at least one quarter of 2020 compared to the same quarter in 2019. We have identified that you need to provide documentation to support your individual circumstance. Such documentation may include any of the following. Relevant tax forms, including annual tax forms, so, so tax returns, quarterly financial statements, if relevant tax forms are not available, or bank statements, if relevant tax forms are not available. So it's either any of the three there, tax returns, quarterly financial statements, or bank statements. You have to upload this. Remember, this is going to be for your second draw PPP loan. If you're doing, if you're trying to get your first draw or only one PPP loan forgiven, you do not have this requirement. So you probably are going to be eligible to skip this part. Okay. Once you've reviewed all the relevant information for accuracy, sign submitted, edits cannot be made to the application. Okay. Withdraw request will delete the submission. Okay. That's down here versus previous to so go back to an unsubmitted application to allow edits. Okay, so once again, if you hit submit and continue to electronic signature, okay, um, edits cannot be made to the application. Okay, once you sign and submit it. Okay, so be very careful, review all the information before clicking and signing. Okay, this is going to be the next page is going to basically going to show you if there's any error messages, what you need to um, upload. Right here, there's title, a person signing field is missing or unanswered. They're going to let you know before you can move on to the e-signature. So application signing is very easy. It's all done through DocuSign. You're going to hit the continue, continue start and check this box here. And then you're going to press the start button and then you're going to initial 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 sign finish okay so very easy we've done this many many times with different SBA loan programs so this is very similar so what you'll notice here is this is the actual form that it's pre-populating for you this um, so it's basically the 3508s right the simplified form that they're going to be pre-populating for you okay so once you um, let's see here so this is if you were to decline Okay, and withdraw. Okay, submitted applications. Right, once the applications are submitted, progress can be reviewed through the portal. So you're going to continue to go back this, to this portal to see the the progress. The call center is not a, is not able to provide details of timeliness or forgiveness. So you remember how there's a call center number right here on this side. Um, don't call here for an update of your status. You want to come here to back to the portal to figure out what the status is. Um, applicants receive an email notifying of corrections. Details of the corrections are located on the summary page. Corrections will be require an application withdrawal and resubmission. Okay, so you'll you'll be notified by email if there's something else that they need okay, for this application. And then once an application moves to SBA decision, the below letter will be available within the application portal for borrowers as confirmation of forgiveness. Okay, so this is going to be a letter 
saying, you know, this is the uh, forgiveness payment, um, all, these, all these details here. Okay, the resources here, there, this is a really good one. Once again, this is the platform. Uh, this is the URL. This is the hotline, okay, which you can call. Remember, don't call for the status here. And then there's going to be a knowledge base of frequently asked questions to be found here. Okay, this is actually really good because um, there are some really good, um, you know, answers here, and they're kind of broken out right here by question. So, um, so I would definitely take a look at this. All right, you guys. You know, hopefully this was helpful. Um, please leave. Remember to leave any questions or comments. Um, down at the bottom and um, I will continue to update you so don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications until next time wish you all a wonderful day bye